There he is. So I got a bunch of comments about these bobbers right here and people saying that these are not slip bobbers. I just want to clarify one thing. Yes, they are. They can have, you can run the line through the middle of the grommet here. See, there's a hole in the top of the bobber. You can put the line through the bottom of the two notches right here. That's a slip bobber and the top notch closest to my thumb there, that is a fixed bobber position. So today we're going to be running the Rod and Bob's Shorty and we're gonna be running it through the middle of the grommet because I was watching an old video of mine fishing with Ken, Hook City, down there in Texas. We were on the Brazos River and we were fishing, we were actually fishing in the winter time. <laughs> you, you, mind, you need a net or, okay, you got it. No net needed. No net. Get you one. <laughs> and throwing a jig, but we needed to suspend a jig above some brush. And the best way to suspend a jig above brush or anything, a tree, anything like that, weed edges, is by using a float, a slip bobber of some kind. Today we're actually in May up in Wisconsin and in, in May we're in the spawning season. Um, we're gonna be using this flip, slip float technique because there's some fish in the late pre-spawn phase right on the edge of weeds. And typically we wanna suspend these jigs like I'm going to say three to four feet down because we're going to be fishing in six to eight foot of water. We want these fish to keep rising up. Crappie love to rise up and, and catch a, a minnow or jig, something like that. Uh, they don't really like to hit baits that are going below them too much. You can catch them that way. I'm not saying you can't, but for the most part, crappie like to look up at baits and that's how they'll feed. So that's what we're trying to do today. We're going to use a bobber, keep this jig, just tie a little loop knot here. I'm going to keep this jig right above them and we got a little bit of wind, good chop. It's going to move that bobber and keep this jig moving looking like a, a live minnow and hopefully we'll put some, uh, some fish in the live hole here and cook them up for lunch. Today's video is sponsored by Two More Cast Tackle Box. When you sign up for your very first month for just one dollar, you're going to get a pack of these shorty bobbers that I'm using today. Um, these are three quarter inch shorties. These are great for both deep water and shallow water applications, specifically more for shallow water, which is what we're doing today, fishing in six to eight feet of water. As these fish start spawning, they're gonna move into that two to three feet of water. This is a great little slip float for it. Along with your subscription, you're gonna get some cool digital products. And then after your first month, you're gonna get some cool lures uh, from this list here, some hair jigs, jerk baits, crank baits, a lot of cool stuff. Plus you can also add in a cookbook and a survival book. I'll link everything in the video description. Be sure to check out Two More Cast Tackle Box. Let's go find some fish and put them in the live well. All right. Well, I don't know if you can see this, but there are fish stacked right above the weed edge. So we're cast out. They're only about four feet down, so this should work. There he is. <laughs> there we go. Crappie number one. They're not big, but they are so fun to catch on this type of little slip bobber technique. That's a female. White bellies this time of year. The males are gonna have real black bellies. These ways are helping the bobber move that jig so I don't actually have to. Oh, there he is. There we go. One of the, the biggest, I guess, mistakes I see a lot of, when I talk to people about bobber fishing, there's another female, really small female, but it's got a fatter belly and we got the white belly. It's going back. One of the biggest mistakes I see when people are bobber fishing with a plastic and a jig is they just let it sit there. Now, I got the waves to help me out a little bit today. Um, if you got a little wind, it's nice. It'll move that jig for you. But if you notice, I'm constantly kind of fan casting around this area and and continuously moving that bobber. I'll let it sit there for like a couple seconds, but if I don't get a bite, I'm gonna keep moving it. Now, if you got a live minnow, you can get away with let, just letting it sit, letting it soak. But if you're using a jig and a plastic, you gotta keep it moving. Oh, there he is. He hit it right on the drop. 
don't know if you guys saw that, but that bobber, you can watch that slip stop kind of slow to go down the line. If you got high vis, you can really see it. That bobber should have dropped all the way straight up and down, but it didn't. That I think is another f female. Our northern lakes, they get really colorful. These black crappie, most of these crappie are going to be black crappie uh, up north, but they get really good colors in them, even though they're not that big. Really colorful fish. See you, buddy. The one thing I do talk about in quite a few of my bobber videos is you got to watch for that negative bite, or it's a super aggressive bite. If they come up and they actually hit the jig before that slip stop actually falls to the bobber, the bobber's going to either sit sideways or like kind of halfway in the water. And uh, if you got high vis line, you can see your bobber stop kind of go down. If that bobber stop just stops moving, either you've hit the bottom and you're too deep, or most likely you got a crappie hanging onto that jig. So go ahead, reel up and set the hook. Oh, there he is. He took that thing all the way down. There's our, there's our male. Here, I'll show you the bellies this time of year. Now this is pretty much only time you can really tell the males and the females apart. They got eggs or you can see it's got a slightly black belly. This guy's not quite all the way there. If we kept this guy out of the water, his belly would be real black, but I don't want to keep this guy. We're going to catch a bunch of these like eight and a half, nine inch fish. Oh, I better measure them because you guys don't think they're nines. I did bring the bump board. He's just over nine. Okay, there we go. He is just over nine inches. I know they don't look big, but these are nine inch fish. See you, buddy. We'll keep a few towards the end here once I get done catching what I want to catch. But that is the approach to using a, a bobber and jig. You got to constantly move it. You're not just letting it soak. You're still fishing it like it's a big search bait. If you guys saw in that last video with the curly tail, just reeling across the weed beds, same same typical approach. This is just suspending this jig across the weed bed so it doesn't get stuck in the weeds. That's all you're trying to do with this bobber and jig setup. There he is. Got him that time. Come here, buddy. Well, that is going to wrap it up for me today. Be sure to check out Two More Cast Tackle Box, top link in the video description. Bobber fishing is a fun tactic this time of year. It's another female, white belly, a little bit bigger of a belly. Well, that is going to wrap it up for me today. A little bobber and jig technique. Um, I'll link everything down below. Be sure to click the top link in the video description. Get you a pair of these uh, three quarter inch shorty slip bobbers uh, for just a buck. Yeah, just one dollar. Plus you get some cool digital products and then next month you get some really cool lures in the mail, hair jigs, crankbaits, jerkbaits, a bunch of different stuff. So click that link and if you got any questions or comments about any of the uh, rigs that I use today, electronics, whatever you want to know, post it in the comment section below or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I always appreciate hearing from you. Good luck on the water this spring. Catch a ton of fish, especially with this rig. We'll see you.